ahead and get started. Um, so welcome everyone to the uh, federal stimulus updates and other resources for businesses impacted by COVID-19 webinar. Um, my name is Amanda Gerke. I'm with the City of Alameda's Community Development Division. Um, I'm gonna go over introductions and an agenda in a minute, but first I just had a few technical notes. Um, first, all of our attendees um, are on mute to make sure the speakers can be heard. But if um, we do encourage you to ask um, questions through the Q&A function, which is at the bottom of your screen. If you have any um, technical issues, you can also um, send us a chat through the chat function. So um, we are going to be recording this presentation. We'll post it on the city's website. And I'll also be sending you all a follow-up email with a link to the recording, as well as any other resources that come up on today's call. This webinar is brought to you by a partnership with the City of Alameda and the Alameda Chamber of Commerce. So I'd like to take a minute to introduce Madeline Sadik, the President and CEO of the Alameda Chamber of Commerce. And um, also from the City of Alameda, we have in attendance Lois Butler and Eric Fonstein. So with that, I'm, I'm gonna introduce our presenters today. Um, we have Marlo Schindler with the Small Business Administration. Um, she is going to provide a brief update on the status of the stimulus bill. Um, she's a bit limited in what she can say at this point because it hasn't yet been signed. Um, so I will follow her with a brief summary of where what we know about the bill so far. It's over 5,000 pages, um, so details are, are still emerging. Um, and then we're gonna hear from Margaret Jackson with the Alameda County Small Business Development Center. She's gonna talk a little bit about resources that are available right now to businesses in Alameda County, um, some of the webinars that they're doing, how to connect with the SBDC during the holiday season, and also kind of what to expect in 2021. And then finally, we'll hear from Kathy Donovan with East Bay Score. And she's going to be talking about the Rebuilding California Loan Program, which is a loan program through the state of California, and some of the micro lenders who are participating in the program. And then finally, we're going to have plenty of time for a Q&A at the end. Um, so any questions that you have, please put them in the Q&A function, and we'll um, address those towards the end of the webinar. So with that, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Marlo to um, uh, talk briefly about the new federal stimulus package. All right. Uh, thank you for the introduction. So um, let me see if you can see the slides, hopefully. So uh, my name is Marlo Schindler. I'm the lead lender relations specialist for the San Francisco District Office of the SBA. Uh, we are the local uh, office for the Small Business Administration, representing the Bay Area counties and the coastal counties from Santa Cruz to the Oregon border. Uh, so as was mentioned, what we're going to be talking about today is continues to be pending legislation. Uh, the, I think, over around 5,600 page uh, document that is is working its way through the process still includes uh, an omnibus bill and a relief bill. So what we'll be talking about, um, what Amanda largely will be talking about since I can't talk about it yet, is the Economic Aid to Hard Hit Small Businesses, Nonprofits, and Venues Act. And as far as I know, there's no cute acronym like the CARES Act or the HEROES Act, so it doesn't really trip off the tongue, but maybe they'll come up with uh, something a little quicker to say when we refer to it in the future. So as of last night, uh, both the House and the Senate have passed a continuing resolution. So um, normally the uh, federal fiscal year starts on October 1st. So in a perfect world, we have a budget for October through the end of September at the beginning of the year. Um, we have not managed to get a federal budget passed. So we have been on a series of continuing resolutions uh, the last couple have only been 24 hours to give uh, Congress more time to negotiate uh, both the relief bill and the budget. So uh, the, con the continuing resolution we're currently on gets us through next Monday, but we still don't have federal budget through the end of the year. So um, that's just one thing to look out for. 
Uh, but last night, uh, both the House and the Senate voted to approve a new stimulus bill and an omnibus appropriations bill, which would give us that, that federal funding through the end of the year. However, these bills have not yet been signed by the president. So at this point, there are no new COVID stimulus funds available. Uh, and again, that's as of this point. What we do have is the uh, publicly available is the language of the legislation that the House and the Senate have agreed upon. So Amanda is going to speak to what has been included in there. And, you know, it seems more than likely that that is the language that will be signed into law. But until it's signed into law, it is considered pending legislation. Uh, and as a, a federal employee, I'm not supposed to speculate on pending legislation. Um, so I'll just do one little bit of speculating right here at the end before handing it over to Amanda. Uh, and that is, if you do look at the legislation language, uh, there are some significant changes being made to what would be a second round of PPP funding. Uh, and because of that, there are some uh, time periods that are baked into the legislation for SBA to react. So even if the president had signed this into, uh, into law, we, I wouldn't be able to say like, go to your bank today. There's going to be at least a 10 day period from when the president signs to when the SBA has to have our rules and regulations in place. So there'll, there'll be about two weeks from whenever this gets signed to two weeks minimum to when a, a new round of PPP would be available because there's the legislation, there's the SBA rulemaking period, and then there's the adoption by the lenders. And that can take days or weeks or months as well. So, you know, the, it's not going to turn on a dime. It's, you know, it's a big uh, enterprise to, to get this program back up and running. And uh, especially because they're not just saying, do it exactly the same way you did it last time, that there are significant changes that are in the bill. Um, so unfortunately, I am going to leave it there. I'll just say again, though, that um, my email address is available publicly, marlo.schindler at sba.gov. I do prefer email to phone calls right now. Um, but if you have questions about, say, like your existing PPP loan and the forgiveness process that you're going through, although that's going to change too, which Amanda, well, it might change if this legislation gets uh, signed into law, which Amanda might be talking about as well. But feel free to reach out to me one on one because I know I wasn't able to say much now. But if you have a specific question about your specific business, I'm, I am here for you. And I'll turn it back to Amanda with that. Thank you, Marlo. Let's see, try to unshare. There we go. All right. So, um, uh, as Marlo discussed, she's not able to give kind of the details of what is included in the bill. And of course, it is still pending legislation. Um, there's a lot of information in there. Um, so I'm going to go over what we're seeing reported right now to be in the bill. It's very likely that um, more details will emerge uh, in the coming weeks. And we'll definitely continue to work with the SBA and our partners at East Bay SCORE and Alameda County SBDC to get this information out to you. Um, also, if you have questions, please go ahead and put them in the Q&A function. We'll um, do those at the end of the presentation and we may not have answers to all of those right now, but anything that we don't have an answer to right now, we can note down and um, come back to you all in a couple of weeks, hopefully with, an, with another webinar once all of the regulations, um, hopefully once the bill is passed and the regulations are, are in place. So um, one of the big pieces for businesses of the uh, uh, new stimulus bill is 284 billion for pay, the Paycheck Protection Program loans. So that's the, the PPP loan program. Um, and this program in terms of eligibility, it will, um, still be available for corporations with a maximum of 300 employees, um, gig and self-employed workers and nonprofits, but they are um, proposing to expand the eligibility to include 501c6 nonprofits and local newspapers, TV and radio broadcasters. Um, priority will be given to first time loan applicants. That being said, um, businesses are, will be eligible to apply for a second loan, even if they received a loan the first time around. But priority will be given to first-time loan applicants, minority businesses, 
um, recipients with 10 or fewer employees and businesses located in low and moderate income neighborhoods. Uh, businesses must have proven revenue loss of 25% or more in one of the four quarters in 2020 compared to the same quarter in 2019. And seasonal companies can pick a customized 12 week period. Um, the maximum loan amount um, would be $2 million and the business would have to have been in operation no later than February 15th, 2020. Um, the deadline to apply is um, will be March 31st, 2021. And we're expecting to see guidelines, hoping to see guidelines for this program in, in early January. Um, the covered period is eight to 24 weeks. And the loan amount um, is the average monthly payroll, um, well, two and a half months of average monthly payroll with restaurant and lodging um, businesses able to multiply by three and a half months. Um, in terms of covered expenses, businesses would still need to certify a minimum of 60% for payroll and a, a maximum of 40% for non-payroll. Uh, there has been uh, some expansion of non-payroll cost categories that will be covered by this program. And that includes expansion to include um, operation costs for software and cloud servers for accounting, inventory and delivery, um, property damage costs related to vandalism due to public disturbances, supply costs of goods that were essential to the business and had pre-existing contracts, worker protection costs. Um, so both operating and capital costs needed to complete comply with CDC, OSHA, other state local health ordinances. And it will still, of course, include um, non-payroll covered costs for rent, interest, and utilities. Um, it will also, um, payroll costs will also be expanded to include group life, disability, vision, dental, and health insurance. There's going to be a new one-page forgiveness application that will be issued within 24 days of enactment to basically, basically further simplify old and new PPP loans up to $150,000. And then um, the, in terms of taxes, um, forgiven PPP loans should not be included in the recipient's gross income. And PPP funds that are used to pay for covered business expenses can still be um, fully tax deducted. So another big piece of this grant will be, uh, I'm sorry, of the stimulus bill will be a grant program for live entertainment venues and cultural institutions. So there's $15, $15 billion in the bill to support these um, organizations, particularly live entertainment venues, cultural institutions, such as theaters and museums with 500 or fewer full-time employees. Um, and they cannot, you cannot do both a PPP loan and one of these, um, uh, entertainment venue grants, you have to do one or the other. So 2 billion of those funds are reserved for entities with 50 or fewer full-time employees. And the initial grant amounts will be up to $10 million per eligible business. And they may do, um, uh, there, there may be a possible supplemental second grant, depending on um, if funds are available. There's also $20 billion in the stimulus bill uh, to replenish the Economic Industry Disaster Loan or EIDL loan advances through the Small Business Administration. So as you guys, as you all may remember, um, businesses were eligible for up to $10,000 in EIDL advances, which were essentially um, a forgivable portion of the EIDL loan. So, and those EIDL advances would not be included in a recipient's taxable gross income. There's also a second round of direct IRS stimulus checks at $600 per person. Um, those would be phased out for folks with um, income over $75,000 for single filers or $150,000 for joint filers. There's also an additional $600 uh, per child for eligible dependents. And uh, Treasury is expected to process these electronic deposits within seven days of the president signing the bill. There's also extension and expansion of unemployment benefits. Um, in particular, the unemployment benefits will be extended for 11 weeks with an additional $300 per week. Um, so that would be beginning the week of December 27th and going into March 14th. There's also an extension of the employee retention tax credit through July 1st, 2021. The bill includes $7 billion for broadband internet across the country, $82 billion for education and expansion of Pell Grants, 
and those CARES Act financial aid grants would not be included in a student's taxable gross income. There's $10 billion for childcare assistance, funding for vaccine distribution, an extension of the paid sick and family leave employer tax credit, $25 billion in rental assistance for individuals who lose income, who lost income due to the pandemic, $13 billion for SNAP food assistance program, and $20 billion for states to expand COVID-19 testing. So that is the summary of what we know um, right now. And um, I'm sure folks have questions about that. Um, please put any questions in the chat. We'll do our best to answer what we can and anything we can't, we'll take note of and come back to you with a, a future webinar. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Margaret Jackson with the Alameda County Small Business Development Center. Thank you, Amanda. I'm going to share my screen here. Um, give me just a second. Okay, can everyone see my screen okay? Okay, I'm going to assume so. Okay, I am Margaret Jackson, the director of the Alameda County Small Business Development Center. And I want to give you some information that will help you <clears throat> throughout the holiday season, um, what it looks like coming back into um, uh, coming into 2021 in resources that uh, we're preparing for, like the stimulus, waiting for all of that to, to materialize for us. But first of all, I want to share our website with you. Oftentimes, uh, some um, our small businesses and partners may have a, a difficult time locating uh, important resources that you're uh, wanting to connect with right now. And so this is our landing page. And you can see right at the top, we have coping with COVID-19 free. Now you can click through onto this um, page, all of the information that is uh, directly um, addressing COVID-19 concerns and issues. That's everything that's happened up to now. This does not include anything that Amanda just talked about in terms of what um, is forthcoming. And again, it, there's been so much fluidity. We don't know what um, is going to stay intact, or what's going to change and those ebbs and flows. And as uh, uh, Marlo stated, as, as an SBDC, we can't speculate on um, what what will happen until we have a signed um, uh, a, a signature from the president. But um, until then, you can grab these resources if you have already gotten your uh, PPPs, uh, IDA loans, all of this, this sort of stuff. There's a lot of information on that page that is still very helpful. In fact, I'm going to um, I'm going to go back to it just, and you can get to it from this link as well, operating amid COVID-19. If you scroll down this page, you can see that we have, we do not give legal advice, but we have now um, uh, uh, partnerships with attorneys that you can ask an attorney. We have webinars that you can attend with our region that you can get some difficult questions, legal questions asked in that space. And again, um, restaurants, um, a resource for COVID funding options. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you're going to see frequently asked questions. And I think those are really great support um, questions that can get you some answers right now. Um, our lead center is North, Northern California SBDC, not the finance center, that's part of the region, but our region center is NorCal SBDC and that's who we um, are accountable to. And I'm going to go back to the homepage here. Our host is Ohlone Community College. I'll talk to you about our operating hours over the uh, holiday break. Um, but I wanted to show you, um, and before I get to the resources, um, if you have not applied for SBD support, whether you're in Alameda County or you're popping in on this webinar, and that happens a lot, make sure that you apply now. Um, it's a little bit of a process. Uh, we're on a centralized intake. And when 
January 4th comes, you want to be in that queue. If we can't get you because our lead center, our centralized intake is shut down right now, it's a process that you're gonna have to wait for, but you want to be in that queue um, on January 4th when uh, SBDCs are fully open by that, uh, by that on that date. And part of that is because we're gonna have something signed uh, by that time and you do not want to, to wait to get in our queue to get to support. Our business advisors are really depth uh, in helping support COVID funding, PPPs, idols, and we'll be able to pivot and adapt with any changes that may come out. And so you want to get that support as soon as possible. Now, if you're a small business that you have been inactive with SBDC, contact your local SBDC or contact us here at Alameda County SBDC, and um, I can easily look you up in the system. Uh, discover whether or not you are inactive or active. If you are inactive, we can easily make you active and assign you, reassign you to uh, an advisor to support your um, needs moving forward uh, with um, right now and with what's to come with the uh, new uh, stimulus package. We're really looking forward to that being helpful to our small businesses. That being said, our resources, um, when you go to our resources, I, I want you to uh, pay close attention to here these handouts. Um, we have done some very specific webinars um, in October, and so we're about at the lifespan of these webinars and readiness guides, but these are our readiness reopening webinars and downloadable guides. So you can, if you are... Uh, all of our businesses, we want to take a look at your credit. I have hired um, a specialist in credit restoration and repair, um, helping you get your 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 credit, um, if it needs to be, um, uh, get that credit score up. It's going to be important to getting funding. And sometimes it's important um, and it's looked at to, to get non-traditional funding and, and that responsibility. Your, your personal credit is really important to lenders, uh, those that are looking to, to provide funding. And so if your credit score is a little challenging, please connect with us. I will get you connected with Janine Beer, who is our expert. Um, and this workshop and readiness guide is really great. Um, she is a partner uh, to this company. And so they are outstanding in Silicon Valley, one of the top um, credit repair uh, companies in Silicon Valley. We've got, um, uh, they work with the San Francisco Housing Authority, attorneys, banks. And so they're very good at working with uh, Experian and, and the credit bureaus to help you get your credit up. And, and sometimes it, it, your credit might be, may have some loss of points because there may be someone on your credit that shouldn't be there, a next spouse or a spouse you've never had or um your identity has been compromised. And so you want to take a look at um, where you're at on your credit, your credit score. So we are being proactive. We are reaching out to businesses that are in our system. We're doing credit wellness checks. We're doing business wellness checks. So if you get contacted by an SBDC advisor, um, I'm having all of our advisors kind of knock on their um, small businesses doors that they have been working with over the years and just checking in on you. So it is not a scam. So if someone contacts you, um, they are uh, SBDC business advisors and they'll identify themselves as such. What they will not ask you for um, is that they will not ask you for your social security number or information that uh, would compromise your, your identity in terms of that. So be careful about that. We do know we have some fraudulent things going on. Uh, secondly, we've, we've done some readiness guides uh, with Street Sense, Street Sense uh, for restaurants and bars. Please, if you're a restaurant and bar, please go through this webinar. It was fantastic. You can download the toolkit here. And again, for the credit, you can download the toolkit here. There's PDFs here that uh, is coinciding with the um, webinars you can see here. Uh, if you're in manufacturing, we did some great, uh, great webinar with um, what you should be thinking about in your um, 
operations, manufacturing operations as it relates to COVID. And then of course we have a readiness guide for you here that you can download. And again, finally, we, we also did a Street Sense Street Sense is an organization out of the East Coast that's uh, depth in uh, restaurant, bars, and retail. And so we also did a readiness for retails and then, of course, the readiness guide. So these resources are extremely helpful. If you're not in any of these industries, um, I would still pick you know, especially the, the credit repair one, you really want to take a look at this information, but some of the retail um, information could be helpful to almost any business uh, because you're, you're public facing and working with the, the community. So you're selling something, you may not be in a mall, but you are getting your products and services out there if you are not online uh, doing that. And so I'm going to scroll back up and go back to our homepage. Those are the main three pages. And again, just scroll down our landing page, apply now, and you can click that link right there and it'll take you straight away to counseling. And if you're interested in our webinars and workshops, you can um, kind of walk through these webinars and workshops and see what is open um, that you might be interested in. Now we're trying to do about 20 hours to 30 hours worth of workshops each month. This month, of course, we have uh, we have finished all of our workshops for this month because it is a short month for us, but we will be back at it in January and a lot of them are already being posted. So please um, register for them. And I would encourage you um, to, to try to make the live webinars. I know it's, I'll sign up and I can get the webinar later. Um, and, and for Alameda County, we do not always give out uh, the webinars for different, uh, for different reasons. Um, but being on those live webinars is an opportunity for, as small business owners you should be talking about your business. You should be asking questions. You should be heard. We should know your name and who you are so we can better support you. And it's really difficult for us to do that if you're watching them on your own um, and you can do that. But I would encourage you, if you can make these webinars, come to these webinars, they're gonna be beneficial to you. And finally, I'm gonna put some information in the chat for our holiday hours. And when we'll be open during the um, pandemic, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop sharing because I'm done with that. Um, we're gonna be open, um, quasi open over the holiday season and I'll have specific information for all of the, um, in fact, I'll open it up here and grab it. Um, so we are shut down from, the, from December 24th to January 3rd, our host college, our Ohlone Community College is our host. And so they shut down for the season, but we still stay open partially. Um, and so what we're doing this season is we have one of our uh, top advisors and I just put this in the chat. Um, Deborah Moody, who is going to be our contact or your contact during the holiday shutdown from December 28th to the 31st. Our phone lines will be open. Um, please email us. I will be checking my emails. If you have an advisor, you can contact your advisor throughout the holiday season. No problem with that. They will be, um, uh, they will be available until the 28th. So they have a cut off because we're closing out the year. But if you want to connect with them, please connect with them before the 28th and help them uh, prepare you for uh, what's to come in the, the, the new uh, funding. And, um, and then, of course, we have the phone number there, the Google Voice line for SBDC 510-516-4118. And then we're closed on the 1st and of the and the 25th, obviously, for Christmas Day and for New Year's Day. And I think that's kind of all we have, but go out to our website, get the information, copy this information out of the, the chat. And please, if you are not a SBDC client, please, please, please apply now because when this funding reopens, we are going to be swamped and you do not want to be at the back of the line. We're going to get to you as fast as we can, but the sooner that you get your information to us, we can start processing your application. And again, if you've already applied for SBDC, please don't reapply. We end up with you know, three, four, five uh, profiles for one business and it gets really complicated in our system as to 
how to serve you, where, where um, a lot of hands may touch your, your, your specific profile. And, and we only need one. And if you have not been active, email me at acsbdc at aloni.edu. It's in the chat. And I can get you reactivated and connected with an advisor. And I'm going to toss it back to Amanda. Thank you. And happy holidays to everyone. Amanda, you're muted. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> it wouldn't be 2020 without a reminder to unmute myself. Um, so um, uh, put any uh, questions in the Q&A function. We're gonna have a question and answer session in a little bit, but first we're gonna hear from Kathy Donovan with East Bay Score. So I'm gonna turn it over to Kathy. Thank you, Amanda. Let me share my screen. Okay, I'm going to apologize in advance for a number of things. Number one, I keep getting messages that my internet is unstable. So I apologize if you have trouble throughout the presentation hearing me. And secondly, I couldn't figure out how to get these uh, slides off that, to get out of this format for my slide presentation. So um, I apologize for that. Um, I'm going to talk today about the California Rebuilding Fund, which I'm sure you've all heard about, the state program. Um, but first, I'd like to just tell you a little bit about SCORE for those of you who aren't familiar with SCORE. Um, we are a, our, our mission really is to, is to foster uh, small business communities, vibrant communities, um, through, through our mentoring and our education. Um, we're a resource partner for the SBA. Um, we have 250 chapters and about 10,000 volunteers throughout the U.S. Um, the East Bay SCORE organization has about 50 volunteers, um, and they are volunteers who are in all, ha have ex extensive experience in all aspects of, of business and all types of businesses. Um, we are available for free counseling. Um, and we also offer low cost workshops. Currently they're on, on, online through, through Zoom. Um, if you would like to get a hold of us, um, I guess I should add that we developed a small team, a team of about 10 of us who are focused specifically on COVID and COVID related um, relief for our small businesses. And so we try to keep as updated as we can for that. So um, all you need to do is go to East Bay Score and look for a mentor. The, um, the profiles of all of us are there. So you can see who has a specialty in what area. Um, and then just sign up for a, um, a mentoring session. Um, and it can be COVID related or not COVID related. But um, right now we seem to be getting an awful lot of clients, obviously, who are worried about the whole COVID situation. So I encourage you to go to our website and sign up not only for mentoring sessions, um, but also for some of our workshops. We have some um, very uh, interesting workshops on varying different aspects of business. So we have a workshop on legal issues. We have workshops on marketing, on SEO, uh, on how to use Excel. So there's a great variety of workshops. They're very low cost, $15 for these online workshops. So I highly encourage you uh, to check out and see what we have there um, and to sign up um, if you find something interesting. So the California Rebuilding Fund, what is that? This is something that came out of the governor's task force in California. And it's basically a private public partnership. So what they're trying to do is aggregate funds from various and sundry organizations, public sector, private sector, philanthropies, um, and they started out with a $25 million commitment um, from iBank. And they also, I believe it's a $95 million guarantee program from iBank. And so these will be offered through um, the CDFIs and we'll talk about those in a minute. So the idea is to get as, as much funding as possible into this fund 
um, and to make loans to small businesses that have been negatively impacted by, um, by COVID, particularly those in, in underserved areas. So the qualifications are essentially that you have to have been negatively impacted by COVID, that you have less than 50 FTE and less than 2.5 million in gross revenue in 2019. And the terms are uh, a loan amount would be equal to three months of your average monthly revenue up to $100,000. So if you had average monthly revenue, let's say in January, February, and March of 10,000, 15,000, and 25,000, um, that would mean that you'd be eligible for a loan of $50,000. Um, it's a three or a five year term and the interest rate is 4.25%. And it's interest only for the first 12 months. Um, the process is that you would go to, you would do a pre-application, at which point you would be matched with one of the CDFIs who are handling the program. And they would tell you what their application requirements are. Generally speaking, applications would require your bank statements, your personal financial statement, all of your, um, your financials that give proof of revenue for, for the preceding year. Um, you need a schedule of ownership, um, all of your identifying information, uh, your social security number, your EIN, business licenses, et cetera. Um, also a brief description of what, your in, what the impact was from COVID-19 um, and any financial statements that show a loss of revenue for this uh, the year 2020. Um, pretty much that's it. If there's a lease agreement involved, then that would be, um, be relevant and that would be asked for as well. So these are just general application requirements for the CDFIs. Each is CDFI will have its own specific requirements. So once you're matched with a CDFI, they will tell you exactly what it is they need for the application. So what is a CDFI? Um, we're going to talk about some of the ones in our area, but basically it's a community development financial institution. They're certified by the U.S. Treasury and they focus on community lending, um, specifically in geographic regions that are underserved uh, or underbanked. And so there are specific organizations that do that. These are some of the ones that we have here in the East Bay, um, or actually in the Bay Area in general. And what I've shown here is the, the name of the organization and then the basic terms of their standard program. So these CDFIs have ongoing uh, micro lending programs for all small businesses. And so if they're not specifically um, related to the COVID uh, issue. However, um, they, do, they are administering this program for the state uh, as far as the COVID funding goes. So Opportunity Fund is a large organization, um, very active in the, East, in the, the Bay Area. Um, and their standard terms are shown here. Um, but again, if they're administering the state um, program, then their terms would be those that I showed you already for that program. Working Solutions is another organization, CBFI, that will be um, partnering with the state in terms of issuing approvals for this program. Um, the terms here are the ones that they are, um, that they have been offering in general. I do know that they came out with some um, more specific terms for people who are, or businesses that are impacted by COVID-19. So they were offering, for example, a 5% rate, a reduction in some of their application fees, et cetera. Um, so um, they already had a program specific to COVID but now they'll be administering this program, which probably is the one uh, that would be of most interest to most of you. Main Street Launch is an organization, um, a CDFI based in Oakland. Um, these are their standard terms. Uh, again, they will be offering the terms of the Rebuild California program um, that I mentioned before. And Pacific Community Ventures is a fourth one now these four are ones that I'm familiar with and that some of my clients work with. There are others and you can find them by going, just going online and looking up CDFIs. 
Um, these are probably the principal ones in the East Bay or in the Bay Area. Um, so that's the story on the, the CDFIs that will be helping you. If you need further information on this program, um, here's a, uh, the, the website that you can go to. And this will tell you more about the program. It'll, um, it'll give you a link for the pre-application process, which will match you with a lender. Um, and then that lender will contact you and tell you exactly what they need as far as the, uh, their organization goes. So with that, I will return to Amanda. Let me stop sharing my screen. Thank you, Kathy. Um, so we're, we have a little time now for uh, questions and answers. And I think um, there's a few things that have come in through the Q&A box. So I'm going to bring these up here um, and hope that our uh, panelists will join me in answering these questions. Um, so the first question is um, about the importance of SBDCs. So why is it important to be an SBDs queue on January 4th? My business received a PPP loan previously without registering with the SBDCs. I'll respond to that. And, and a lot of businesses do go it alone. Um, it just gets challenging for some businesses. We're here and we're available. We recommend that if you don't have to go it alone, get the support. Unfortunately, um, many businesses, because they did not have that support, were not successful in getting the loans. And so your um, your your best strategy um, is always getting support that um, from any SBDC or SCORE that can help you navigate through some of the challenges. And, and we also have direct access to our SBAs. And so there might be questions that we need to get quick answers to, and we can help provide that. So there's an advantage to that. You certainly do not have to come to an SBDC, but if you're going to and you want that support, then um, certainly register and sign up because we can navigate um, through some of the logistics uh, quicker and faster and get through some uh, some barriers to entry um, when uh, our, S our small businesses may have to um, fight a little bit harder to, to break down some of those barriers. So we're here to support and um, it all, it's always optional. You do not have to use this, but we encourage you to, to not go it alone and get as much support as possible. Additionally, we don't just help with PPP and um, the, the fundings and the different uh, types of loans. We help with all different capacities outside of giving um, uh, legal advice. And so I would, I would and it's a free service to you. So I would um, use every available resource that can help support your business during this time and post this time. This is what we're here for. Um, but again, at the end of the day, it is your, uh, your, it's your decision to make. Thank you, Margaret. And I, I would just like to put in a second plug for both the uh, SBDC and the SBA. Um, these are folks who can really provide customized free technical assistance to businesses. Um, you know, I, we've been doing a webinar series and it's been great to have folks join us and we kind of give out generalized information, but these are folks who can really um, sit down with you and take a closer look at your businesses and your specific concerns and provide tailored answers to you and then assistance with the loan applications, which can be invaluable. So we're, we're very lucky to have both of these resources in our community. Um, so um, another question, there were a couple questions that we answered through chat that were specifically about the, um, about the new stimulus bill. One was whether or not landlords can apply for PPP. That is one that we don't have the answer to quite yet. Um, but what I am gonna be trying, to, I'm taking notes of all these questions. Um, and I am going to try in the sometime in January when we do have a better sense and the, you know, the regulations have been issued to have another webinar so we can really dig into the details on this and get folks the answers um, to these questions. On a, on a similar note, someone had been asking for the details about the entertainment venue grant. So I did um, in the q and I, I did provide a link to the proposed bill. And um, the page, page 2,124, I think, <laughs> that uh, includes that information. So, so folks can kind of take a look and, and see the information that we have now. Um, 
And then we have uh, another question here um, about uh, rental assistance and whether the money is would be given to the renter or the small landlord or both. Um, and that is, um, for me, that is a question which I do not yet have an answer to. Um, I'm going to see if Marlo chimes in, but I think that she might not have an answer to that one yet either. So I think that may be one that we have to add to our list for future um, for future webinars. That that wouldn't be one that SBA would be uh, doing anything with. Well, the the Good point. the stage save our stages and. Um, the question about landlords uh, the first question about landlords would be relevant to us but um not not that not that one thank you um so there's a question here about whether the self-employed can apply for ppp um marlo do you want to take that one or do you want me to yeah it, it, as long as so some of the eligibility criteria uh are changing but uh self-employed uh, businesses, self-employed individuals were eligible the first time, and I believe they will be eligible the second time, but um, pending pending the passing of the legislation. Other questions? We have a few more minutes. All right. Um, well, I want to take this time to thank all of our panelists, um, Marlo, Kathy, Margaret. We really appreciate your time today. This was a very, um, you know, we uh, we kind of put this together, um, wanting to be responsive to the Stimulus Act, and so folks were able to come together and provide information, and we really appreciate that. We we had hoped when we planned this webinar that we would have had a, a past act and be able to provide even more detail. Um, but I think we did get some good information, including about the resources that are available right now through SBDC and SCORE. And um, I am going to be working with these folks to come back together again in January when we have more information um, and are able to really kind of get into your questions in a more detailed way. So I will be sending the um, I will be sending the, the link to this out, the, uh, to the recording out to folks who participated, as well as information from the chat. And um, I also wanna thank Madeline Sadek with the Alameda Chamber of Commerce for her assistance in organizing this, this webinar. And um, again, thank you to all of our panelists. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye-bye and happy holidays to all of our attendees. Thank you for attending. <laughs>